Hello and welcome to the Monday, March 12th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from San Francisco, California. Paying to get your files back after you have been infected by ransomware has always been a dubious solution, but if you ever wondered what your chances are to get your files back after paying, as expected, they're not really all that great. Only about half the companies surveyed by security company CyberEdge got their files back after paying. I think uh, this ratio is actually better than what I expected. The good news, most of the companies got their files back without paying by essentially just restoring from backups. But I always take a surveys like this with a grain of salt and uh, this one in particular, not really clear whether or not they did anything closely scientific here or just surveyed their customers. The lesson here that I think is definitely valid is that good backups give you a better chance of recovering your files than paying the ransom. And actually, one thing that I've seen a lot with ransomware, if you do catch it quickly enough, there is a good chance that many of the files are actually not encrypted at all. They just change the file name. So that's another way to get some of your files back if the backups don't work out. Now, we have seen somewhat regularly vulnerable routers used to further compromise networks. One of the most common and simplest methods this is usually done is by DNS changers that change the DNS setting of the router. And then of course, those settings may propagate into the network via DHCP. But Kaspersky came across a new piece of router malware that appears to be more targeted, in particular aimed at sysadmins. The malware affects routers made by Microtic and spreads to the sysadmin via the admin utility used to manage the router. So not via DNS settings, the administrator has to actually connect to the router using the admin utilities, and then a malicious DLL is loaded. At this point, Kaspersky does not know how the router actually got infected. Could be as simple as a default or easy to guess passwords, but the malware itself doesn't appear to be new. It has just been sort of flying under the radar. So far, Kaspersky has only found about 100 infections in the wild. Microtic now also added a signature to its firmware. So if you update your firmware and this malware is found on the router, you should get an alert or the malware should just not run. The malware has so far mostly been found in Africa and the Middle East and between that and only 100 infected systems, that's probably why it sort of stayed under the radar for so long. And a threat intelligence company Recorded Future made an interesting discovery that vulnerability reports made available via the Chinese National Vulnerability Database are off Often manipulated. It appears that vulnerabilities that could be used by the Chinese Ministry for State Security and offensive cyber operations are held back to allow for more time to exploit them and to reduce awareness and patching for these vulnerabilities. The move is somewhat odd because essentially only Chinese are using this database. There are a number of other databases out there. There are vendor announcements and the like. So really they're only hurting well Chinese entities for the most part but uh, this may actually be a little bit the goal here given that the Ministry for State Security isn't just responsible for foreign espionage but also for internal and uh, that's sort of where these exploits may play a role. Now, these kind of databases, and there's also one here in the US, the National Vulnerability Database that is run by NIST, uh, they are sort of a nice one-stop shopping kind of place for vulnerabilities, for patching information, but you should always try to also sign up for alerts from the creator of the software, because often these larger databases, they don't cover every single possible vulnerability, but only vulnerabilities that they consider significant 
often enough and that are reported to them. And looks like password safe company Keeper can't catch a break. Chris Vickery, a security researcher, came across an exposed S3 bucket that contained various versions of a Keeper's software. Now, this in itself wouldn't be really all that bad if this is sort of the official software repository for Keeper and that's how they sort of allow people to download their software. But apparently full access was possible to this particular S3 bucket without authentication, meaning that anybody could also manipulate files being stored on that S3 bucket. Okay, so if someone manipulates those files, uploads malicious replacements for Keeper, then, well, software signatures should alert the user that uh, this particular software isn't legit. But apparently the exposed directory also included an Apple code signing certificate, including the private key, which could then be used to at least sign Apple versions of the software. And a Brazilian gang apparently has set up a service to clone chip cards. These are the cards that were handed out over the last couple of years in order to replace the old credit cards. And just about now, most merchants are starting to accept chip cards. Well, the problem is that the protocol being used in these chip cards allows for too much flexibility to actually not do any authentication. These credit cards run essentially little Java applets on the chip and uh, once you plug your chip card into the reader, it will advertise to the reader what authentication methods are supported and what applets are available. And by just not supporting any authentication, the chip card can be used without actually having to authenticate itself or without having to check the authenticity of the reader. So what we got here is a very classic problem that declined, in this case, the credit card is in charge of authentication and can essentially instruct the terminal to bypass any kind of meaningful authentication. This particular flaw has been pointed out before, but up to now it was really more theoretical, more a lab experiment. Now with this Brazilian gang, actually there is a service available and you can hire them in order to clone cards for you. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.